A couple months ago, I installed permanent holiday lighting on my house. I put a video up on YouTube to show the effects to my family and friends. I got a lot of questions and a lot of comments and a lot of people asking exactly how I did it. So I did it in July, so it was nice temperature and I didn't have to battle the cold. But here I am in December, about minus 13, and I'll show you guys a quick rundown of exactly how I set it up. One of the questions I got was how does it look during the day? As you can see right here, this is about 50% brightness. You can see it and I could turn it up to 100% if I wanted to, but I don't really put it on during the day anyways. The reason I went with the strips is you can barely see them when you're walking by. When the lights are turned off, you can't even tell they're there. If anything, it finished off my soffits nicer than they were before as it provides a smooth transition. Even up close, it's hard to tell that there's anything there. And like I said, it kind of finishes off my soffit. I decided to hide the power supply and the dig quad outside. I put it up above the soffit and from the front door area, you can't even see it. Starting right at the beginning, for power, all I'm doing is plugging into my existing GFCI outlet. I got an eight foot extension cord, plugs in there. I've got it running up right beside the uh, drain pipe. And then I've got my, all my components situated up here. The outlet is controlled by a switch. My friends and family have a habit of turning off switches that they shouldn't. So I got these little covers 3D printed from somebody locally. I don't have a 3D printer and I think it cost me about five or 10 bucks. It comes with this little stick that you can use to turn it off and on. And then I just hide this kind of by the front door so it's always around when I need it. This is the bulk of the wiring. As you can see, I've got a Meanwell IP65 outdoor power supply. I didn't want to put it inside a garage and deal with running wires outside. It's fed into a box that has the dig quad inside. I'm using Ray Wu X connects to connect the lights. You can see I've got very short runs going from the dig quad to the LED lights inside the aluminum channels. Items here to purchase are the Meanwell power supply, a weatherproof box for outside, and the cable glands to run the cables through. So this is what I ended up with for the electrical box. We've got power in. This is uh, line one out for the lights. This is power injection for those. Line two lights. this will feed that. To get power to the upper roof line, I'm actually running power only to a dig uno that's located under the soffit on the upper roof line. This cable is a 16-2 landscape wire. I run it outside. I'm running it along this little eave, up and then along the back wall. I'm not gonna climb on the roof because I don't wanna die today, but you can see up there, there's another box. From the street and even below, this is very unnoticeable. You're gonna have to hide it differently on yours, but trust me, there's a lot of places you can find to hide things. The Meanwell power supply does not come with a plug on the end. This was about five or $10 at a local hardware store. You can see that I've got the wires here just zip tied together. Again, this is a little bit of a mess up here, but no one sees this at all. You can see here the aluminum channels are mounted to the underside of the soffit. They come with these little mounting clips that you can see right here. All I did was screw them to the underside with the screws that they came with and the aluminum channels clip right in. A pro tip provided by Rob is not to put the joins of the diffuser channels at the same place as the diffuser plastic. You wanna stagger them. You can see here, the join of the plastic is in a different spot. This allows the plastic to hold the channels aligned and you won't have any messy joints. This is the end of my run. My plan was actually to power inject at the end of every run. And this is the longest one, which is 480 pixels, but I thought it looked fine without it. So I ended up wasting a lot of time and money for power injection that I didn't end up using. The wire sitting inside and these pigtails on the end aren't being used. I just tucked them up underneath the gutter to keep them away from the elements. The rest of this I'm gonna do inside because there's no reason I should freeze my fingers because I got mine done in July. The process of putting the channels to the soffit is actually really easy. I'll give you a quick demonstration here. Let's pretend this is the soffit and this will be the underside of the soffit. Surprisingly, it's easier to do this above your head than on a camera right here. I'm gonna put in four of these clips to simulate a join. From here, this is the aluminum channel. 
all it does is just clip in like that. You can slide it a bit back and forth, but don't rely on that too much. And the other piece comes in here. You wanna make sure it's nice and tight before you join it. And then it clips into place and that's it. For the diffuser plastic, all you do is put it in and it just snaps into place. Again, you want the join. You want to offset the joins of the diffuser plastic and the aluminum channel. And you can see here, that's our joint. Looks pretty good. For the strips, I went with WS2815 12 volt strips. The reason I went with 12 volt is because I don't like to power inject. Also, I went with IP66. If you don't get a lot of snow, IP65 might work, but the back side I've heard isn't waterproof. And that's what the manufacturer said as well. So these IP66 is the strip inside is loose inside the silicon sleeve. The IP67s are another option, but they've got the coating of the IP65 inside the sleeve of the IP66. The problem with that is if you have any issues down the road and you have to make a repair, that's really hard. This one is easy enough to cut and then you can very easily maneuver the strip inside and then you can waterproof it when you're done. One comment about the IP65 and IP66 is the ones with the silicon sleeve do not have any adhesive backing. Putting these up in the channels using two-sided tape was a really big pain. It was very frustrating, the tape didn't want to stick, and I ended up having to use the channels themselves to hold them up with the diffusers holding them in place while I went along. I don't even know if they're actually held in there with the tape or just by the diffuser plastic. If you can get away with the IP65, install is probably a lot easier. One of the things that you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to get strips to the lengths that you need for your roof line. There's a couple ways of doing this. The obvious way that a lot of people do is they solder themselves. They cut the strips, they solder them together, and there's lots of videos online how to do that. I don't know how to solder, and I didn't wanna learn how to solder. Not that I don't want to, but I just don't have time right now to figure out how to solder and put it all together. So I found a seller that was willing to make custom lengths for me. So I measured my roof line and sent them my dimensions and they made me the lengths I need. Not only that, they put wires in where I needed to make bends. That way I don't crimp the actual strip itself. Good. The good news is we got it all set up and it works. One thing I forgot to mention was making the power cord to go from the dig quad on the main level up to the dig uno on the upper level. What I did is I took the Rei Wu pigtail, the landscape wire, and I used these solder seal connections. I say no soldering, but this isn't really soldering. You take these little tubes and you take a heat gun and you put the wire, slip this over top, and then put the wire in the other end, and then use the heat gun to shrink it. The other thing I did was I took this heat shrink and put it over top so it was still a black connection. So it still kind of hides into the house a little better. That should be it. If there's anything I missed, or if you have any other questions, let me know. And this is the result. Permanent holiday lights that I never have to put up or take down again, or at least not for a good 15, 20 years.